Folks, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers got a win on Christmas Day against the Arizona Cardinals with a final score being 19 to 16 in overtime. Now, this means that the Buccaneers move on to a 7 and 8 record, and if they win next week versus the Carolina Panthers, they will have first place in the NFC South locked in and they will guarantee a playoff spot. So, it wasn't a pretty win against the Cardinals, but a win is a win at the end of the day. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Tom Brady, 32 of 48, 281 yards, one touchdown, and two interceptions. This was not the best game in the world by Tom Brady, and it continues a streak of not great play that we've seen from the GOAT from TB12. Now, part of this was because of a couple of off throws by Brady here or there. Part of it was because the offensive line was absolutely decimated with injuries and just overall not great play. We'll talk about that in a little bit as well. Part of it was because of chemistry issues with some of his wide receivers, Mike Evans being a main contributor, I guess I should say, to that, or a main person for that. Both interceptions that Tom Brady threw were targets intended for Mike Evans. Both were picked off by the same player from the Cardinals, that being Marco Wilson. Shout out to Marco Wilson. He had a good game against the Buccaneers in that matchup. So there were a lot of factors that went into Tom Brady's performance in this one. Not, a, you know, obviously not any of it great, and a lot of it needs to improve. The offensive line play, the chemistry between Tom Brady and his receivers, and just Tom Brady with some of those off throws in general. Do I believe Tom Brady will be able to improve on that? Absolutely, there's no doubt about that in my mind, but we will just have to see Tom Brady improve and when that does come around. But all in all, you know, Brady did lead them on a game-winning drive. At the end of the day, in the second half, he was able to get the job done and get the Buccaneers in a position to win the game and even tie the game when it mattered most. So, TB12 didn't have the best game in the world, but also was able to get it done when it mattered most. You gotta give him credit for that. Leonard Fournette on this day, 20 carries for 72 yards for 3.6 yards a carry. Rashad White, 7 carries for 36 yards. Keyshawn Vaughn had a carry for 6 yards, and Tom Brady had 2 carries for 1 yard. It finally worked the QB sneak with Brady, and it did work in a very crucial situation. Very happy to see that. But Fournette and Rashad White, this was interesting to me because Fournette, while he didn't necessarily do bad running the football in this game, I was a little disappointed that we did not see more Rashad White, at least in terms of, you know, average yards per carry. White was the better person in this situation. Now, Fournette did have some very crucial plays, not just as a runner, but especially as a receiver, which we will talk about, but did definitely want to see more Rashad White. He did make some plays in his own right. He did have a touchdown uh, receiving wise, which we'll talk about in a moment. But yeah, still, you know, kind of weird how they're dulling out these running back carries and whatnot when Rashad White is, you know, time and time again proven that he is, at least for the time being, the better runner than Leonard Fournette in most situations. So why don't we see Rashad White get more running opportunities? It's a little bit of a mystery to me. Anyway, moving on to the receiving game. Leonard Fournette, this is where I talk about the value of Leonard Fournette here. 10 targets, 9 catches, 90 yards. There were so many checkdowns and screens to Leonard Fournette in this game. It was bananas. Now, the longest reception that Fournette had was a 44-yard screen that really turned the tide of the game late in the second half, and Fournette did a very good job as a receiving back. I will 100% say that Fournette got the job done and made a lot of, you know, clutch plays and big moments whenever the Buccaneers needed him to do so most, especially in terms of getting first downs on checkdowns and whatnot. Fournette got the job done. Going to give him a lot of credit for that. Maybe that's why they were playing Fournette more is because they wanted to give him those opportunities in the receiving game. Russell Gage had himself a very solid game. Six targets, five catches for 65 yards. As I've said before, I'm so, so happy to see Russell Gage improving more in the receiving game because I feel like it's been a long time coming. Gage has been dealing with so many injuries and it's been so unfortunate this year. Now he's starting to get the ball rolling in terms of being a consistent receiver for this team, which I love to see that. Good job, Gage. Keep up the great work. Chris Godwin continued to have a healthy dose of targets and receptions in this game. 10 targets, 8 receptions, 63 yards. No touchdowns, but Godwin 
man, he caught so many screens in this game, and it is infuriating to see that in one way, but it is, you know, somewhat encouraging in another way, because there are a couple of times where those screens work, so that's good, but Chris Godwin had himself an overall solid game, eight catches, 63 yards, not bad at all. Mike Evans, uh, you know, that's kind of where I'm talking about the, the struggles of Mike Evans in this one, eight targets, three catches, 29 yards, two targets that were thrown his way were intercepted, and it just wasn't a great game for Evans, you know, he was just kind of off in this game, and it's been a, a pretty interesting streak of just a little bit of off play, Mike Evans did make a couple of nice catches in overtime that did, you know, help the Buccaneers get the win at the end of the day, but you would definitely like to see Mike Evans be able to make more consistency with his overall good play he's the number one wide receiver on this team we all know that he can be a fantastic elite wide receiver we just got to see it a little bit more but it just continues the struggles that we've seen from Brady and Evans throughout the entirety of this year as I spoke about Rashad White four catches 17 yards and a touchdown on the day great job by Rashad White for getting a touchdown always going to give people credit whenever they make plays like that Kadon had a pretty tough game in this one. Seven targets, two catches, 12 yards, a couple of drops here and there, a couple of penalties here or there. It was probably the roughest game we've seen from the rookie tight end this year, but I do believe that he will be able to bounce back. Now we move on to the defense, and the defense I thought played great in this matchup. I really do believe that. Levante David, 10 total tackles, one tackle for loss, one pass deflection. He had a great game. Devin White, nine total tackles, three quarterback hits, and a fumble recovery as well. Devin White was on one, and he's been streaking together some pretty good play, which is very encouraging to see. Very happy to see Devin White whenever he is playing some good football. Mike Edwards had seven tackles and a tackle for loss. Uh, Logan Ryan had eight tackles and a tackle for loss, and he also had a couple of really nice pass deflections in this matchup as well. Anthony Nelson had four total tackles, one sack, one quarterback hit, and a forced fumble, the one that was recovered by Devin White. Anthony Nelson looked very good as a pass rusher in this one. I was very impressed with what he was able to do and get the job done in terms of sacking the quarterback. He had the only sack on the day of Trace McSorley. So, you know, Anthony Nelson, hey, his contract's up at the end of this year. Might be making himself some more money either with the Buccaneers or elsewhere around the league. Carlton Davis, four total tackles, one tackle for loss, one pass deflection. Sean Murphy bunting, four tackles, and two pass deflections. Those guys did a really great job of blocking up the Cardinals wide receivers for the most part. Now, they did get some trickery in there. For example, like Greg Dorch had 11 targets, 10 catches, and 98 yards. He's such a shifty wide receiver. It's absolutely bonkers. But DeAndre Hopkins, 10 targets, one catch, four yards. Shout out to Carlton Davis and especially Sean Murphy Bunting, who was traveling a lot with Hopkins throughout this game. Carlton Davis was a pretty decent amount as well. Those two guys stepped up in a big, big way and completely eliminated the best weapon that the Cardinals had on that offense. I give them a ton of credit. Those two guys played great, especially with SMB. You know, the guy has had such up and down play throughout his career so far up to this point. He definitely returned to form in this matchup against the Cardinals. Now, just taking a little bit of another look, you have Keanu Neal had a tackle, a pass deflection, and an interception. It was on a Hail Mary, but hey, shout out to Keanu Neal. I think that he's just, you know, I get it. It was on in a Hail Mary. Ah, anybody could have gotten that interception, but hey, you know, I'm going to give the guy credit. He got himself an interception. He continues to add to his stat sheet, and I really... Want to see the Buccaneers re-sign Keanu Neal. I think that he has been an excellent, excellent player for this Buccaneers defense in a rotational type capacity. Could even be a starter if they need him to be next year. I really do think Neal has done a great job, and he continues to add to his stat sheet by getting an interception, getting getting a couple of plays like a pass deflection in there as well. Finally, just to talk about special teams, Devin Tompkins did a little bit better as a returner in this one. Three returns on kickoffs, 68 yards, an average of 22.7 with a long of 33. One punt return for 14 yards. Not too bad. Jake Camarda, five punts for 244 yards with an average of 48.8. Not the best game in the world by Camarda, but things will certainly improve, I believe. And Ryan Suckup was the all-star of this game. Four for four on field goals long of 42 one for one on an extra point scored 13 points out of the 19 points that the Buccaneers scored including the game winning field goal I mean 
It was a kicker's duel in this game, point blank, simple as that. My, Matt Prater was 3 of 3, 1 of 1 on his extra points, scored 10 out of the 16 points for the Cardinals in this one. It was a kicker's duel. Ryan Suckup got the win in the end for the Bucks, and yeah, he's money. I mean, hey, you put him, you know, anywhere between 40, 45 yards or lower, man's probably going to make the kick. Anything past that, eh, it's a little bit of shaky territory in my opinion, but you know what? Suck up got the job done. He got the Bucks the win, and that is what matters most in the end. Suck up did a really, really good job in this one. And overall, like I said, this was not a pretty win by the Bucks. There's a lot of meh things to talk about. The offensive line, we haven't even addressed that yet. Uh, they struggled in this one. Uh, Josh Wells got hurt. We'll talk about that in a separate video. Brandon Walton had to come in. He did not play good. I get that he was going up against J.J. Watt, but... Man, oh man, it was a tough game. Now, it, it's unfortunate to see that because Walton played so good against, you know, the New Orleans Saints whenever he was filling in for Donovan Smith earlier in the year. But I've talked about it before, man. You know, with Donovan Smith being out and even with Josh Wells being out, you know, uh, you notice bad tackle play when it does come up. And that happened in this game against the Cardinals. I mean, J.J. Watt feasted in this game man two two tackles for loss two quarterback hits i mean the man looked like he was in his prime once more even you know another pass rusher cameron thomas had two quarterback hits on the day it was a tough time for the left tackle position for the bucks now hopefully you know a guy like donovan smith can get healthy josh wells he's going to be out for the year as i said we'll talk about that in a separate video but Brandon Walton struggled in this one mightily. As I said, K. Dotton struggled a little bit with penalties as well. Uh, Nick Leverett maybe struggled on a play here or there. Uh, Tristan Wirfs re-aggravated his ankle injury, apparently, which isn't good. So, yeah, I mean, there's just some question marks now surrounding that offensive line, especially concerning injuries. That also led to some of the struggles from Brady in this matchup because why wouldn't you line up J.J. Watt? against the, you know, the part of your offensive line that is suffering the most, that'd be the left tackle position. And so I don't blame the Cardinals for doing that at all. But yeah, folks, at the end of the day, there was some ugly stuff with the offensive line, with injuries, with some couple of interceptions here, there, some really mind boggling play calls towards the end of the game. They ran a draw play on a third and three what i mean there's just a lot but at the end of the day they did get the win there were some positives to pick out of this ugly win and at the end of the day hey they did win the game and that's what matters most so folks let me know your thoughts and opinions about this win down in the comment section below i would love to hear it thank you all so much for watching this video hope you all enjoyed and i'll see you all in the next video or the next live stream but until then and as always guys goodbye for now and go bucks